Hello, welcome to my video about everything I wish I knew before actually studying abroad in Korea. This is the second video of my series of deciding to study abroad in Korea. And I really recommend that you watch the first video in the series if you are on the fence about studying in Korea or if you've actually decided to study abroad in Korea because I think it gives you a lot of insight about what to expect academically and school life-wise. A lot of the things I talked about in the previous video will apply even if COVID has been eradicated because it does have to do with a societal expectation of how education is here in Korea. This video will be helpful regardless of whether or not there is a pandemic. So this is literally everything I wish I knew before being in Korea. So I hope it helps. The first point that I'm going to make, and this is going to be specific to Yonsei, may be applicable to other schools, is that I really recommend that you research how course enrollment works for your school planning on making another video about how course enrollment was for Yonsei, but pretty much Yonsei has a mileage system and I did not understand how that worked and that honestly put me back quite a bit while I was signing up for courses here. I really recommend that you research in depth about how course enrollment works at your school just so that you don't make the same mistakes I do and you actually get the classes that you're hoping to get. Everything from now on will not be related to school or academics. The number one thing that I regret completely is how I did my SIM card. So if you're a foreigner, you can actually get a SIM card for much cheaper by going to a place that specializes in giving it to foreigners. I believe most of the people who studied abroad in Korea this past semester got their plans from Chingu Mobile, but I know that there's multiple different places that do this. Pretty much how they work is that you can get like multiple months for like the price of one month if you go with your friends. So I recommend adding yourself to the group chats that are for your study abroad time, joining a foreigners in Korea group, and seeing if anybody else wants to get a SIM card with you. Because I paid 39000 every single month because I got my SIM card through SKT. And that's pretty much what you could think of is the Verizon or AT&T of America. I could have gotten five months for 39000 if I had used the plan that I mentioned before. So I really recommend looking into that. And also, I know that some people buy their SIM card before coming to Korea, but personally, I didn't really see a need for that. Moving on, let's go on to transportation. So I really recommend that you download Kakao Maps, Neighbor Maps, and the Chiachol app. The third one is more or less optional. If you're somebody who's planning on using the subway a lot, then I recommend you getting it. But honestly, you don't really need it given that the first two do really, really well. So if you didn't know, Google Maps is not used in Korea. It's pretty much non-functional due to security reasons. So they do have some information about places, but once you try to start navigating and stuff, they have no information when it comes to public transportation, route times, pretty much anything else that you might want from a Maps app. So the two apps that you need to get is Neighbor Maps and Kakao Maps. Once you know how to use these apps, it will literally change your life. Some tips and tricks are that you can link your Kakao account or your neighbor account to the app and you can make lists of places depending on region, trip, whatsoever. And you can also share these lists. And this is more specific to neighbor. I don't think you can share your list for Kakao map. So if you made a birthday cafe list, you can send that to your friend. Another hack is that both apps will tell you which platform to stand at when you're doing transfers at the subway. This is really helpful when you're running out of time and you want to get to a place as fast as you can because that map will actually tell you where to transfer. Another thing to mention that's just a tip or trick is that Kakao Maps is much better at identifying where you are. River Maps has always been like a block or two off for me. So I recommend using Kakao Maps when you're like actually walking to a place so that you know where to go. Sometimes some places will only be in one map app. So if you can't find a certain place, then you might want to try looking it up in the other app. The most important thing that I really, really want to emphasize here in Korea is that it's really, really hard to live here without your ARC, which is your alien registration card, 
and a Korean credit card. And the thing is, these two are interrelated in that you can't really make a Korean bank account unless you have a specific reason. I also have a vlog where I pretty much get rejected from the bank from making a bank account because they were like, you don't have a specific reason for wanting a bank account. I really recommend making your appointment to get your alien registration card before you come to Korea because those reservation spots fill up so quickly that once you're here in Korea, you would have to wait like a month or two before actually getting it. This is also the prime complaint of the Yonsei Study Abroad Exchange students because they came here in September, August, and they got their alien registration cards in November. Without your alien registration number, you cannot get your QR code. That is pretty much the standard way of checking in whenever you go in to a place while there is the pandemic going on you can pretty much leave your phone number behind at a place with a timestamp so that if there is somebody who is exposed to covid they can contact you being like you should go get tested but you can't get that qr code unless you have your arc pretty much without your arc or a korean credit card you sometimes cannot make purchases online you also cannot make purchases for public transportation using the automated machines. This has also appeared in one of my vlogs that I'll someday get to. It sucks. So try to get your ARC and maybe even a Korean credit card ASAP. The most important thing about having your ARC is that you can link that to your phone number so that the phone number that you have verifies your identity here in Korea. Every time you try to verify yourself by receiving a text message you can't verify yourself unless you have your arc number linked to your phone number so again having an arc is super super vital when it comes to living in korea especially during the pandemic if you don't have an arc and you are here in korea or you're coming to korea you should get your printout of your vaccine from the Korean government. So you can go to your local Korean health center and ask them to print it out. Pretty much whenever you enter a place, they'll ask for your vaccination status and you can show them that paper instead. The final thing that I regret a lot about my time here in Korea is that I really, really recommend taking advantage of the things that Korea has to offer. I personally took dance class for like five months and despite that, I wish I started sooner. I really recommend looking for classes to take, things to do that are long-term just so that you can meet new people, learn a new skill, have some fun, and to get started with it as soon as possible. I took a one-day soap making class and it was so much fun, but the thing is, I took it in like late November and Pretty much that was too late for me to take a regular class for it. Classes are pretty cheap here in Korea, so take advantage of everything Korea has to offer. Because public transportation is so great, anywhere in Seoul is accessible to you and you can take classes for pretty much any skill. You might have a little bit of difficulty due to the language barrier, but most instructors and most classes are willing to work around that. If you're planning on doing anything, i.e getting a procedure done. For example, I got my freckles removed while I was here in Korea. I got started on that a little bit too late. It turned out that I needed to get three sessions with one month intervals between them. So you might want to go do your research as soon as you come to Korea because something that you might want to do that you thought was really simple may be something that you actually need to look into for the long term. Actually knowing about this would make your life a lot easier. I personally have a freckles removal appointment the day before my flight because of how late I got started. But yeah, don't make my mistake and actually look into the procedures that you want to get done. Look into the classes that you might want to take for the long term. And finally, I really, really, really recommend doing research about festivals, events, holidays, and stuff so that you can schedule trips. I personally made an impromptu trip to Gwangju over Chuseok. Loki did not even know when Chuseok was and I had a great time, but honestly, if I did have the opportunity to plan ahead, I may have gone somewhere else. So I definitely recommend making a list of everywhere you want to go and maybe even scheduling it out a little bit just so that you're not trying to cram everything in the week before you leave Korea. 
I know a lot of people who studied abroad here in the fall regretted not going to some places because they just didn't have the time. For example, there's a lot of really cool museums here in Korea, there's a lot of cool hikes here in Korea, wink wink. I'm really regretting the fact that I didn't take advantage of all the museums while I was here in Korea. But it's kind of too late. On a side note, I really really enjoyed my time hiking here in Korea and I wish I'd explored more mountains. But again, I didn't even know hiking in Korea was a thing. I only knew because of the group chat. So don't be like me, do your research, look into things that you could do outside of online classes or in-person classes. It really adds to the quality of life. But yeah, that pretty much concludes my video about all of the tips, tricks, and things that I wish I knew before actually coming to Korea. Please feel free to leave questions in the comments. Even if it's not a question, I'd be happy to give you my two cents. I really enjoyed my time here in Korea. I think I have a lot of information to offer, so please feel free to ask anything. I'll try my best to answer them. But thank you so much for watching!